one bucket at a time. Dig, 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 dig all day long. Dig, dig, dig while I sing this song. All right. Like if you looked really closely, could you, could you tell? I don't know, but can we tell where it is? The idea is that it's perfectly concealed. So when you're in it and there's an enemy coming by, you're not going to be found. You're, you're, you can't, can't even tell. Can't even tell it's there. Look it. Done. Well, good morning guys. Today it's a special day because it's a project that's close to my heart. I've always liked digging. So has Dawn. So today's project is we're going to build an authentic Japanese spider hole using some of the primitive tools that would have been used of the time, like a tiny little military grade shovel, some buckets, some old square timbers, stuff like that. And we're going to try to keep it as authentic as possible. Now let's get started. So we're uh, been digging for about 20 minutes now. We're down about two feet, two and a half feet. Uh, our goal is about five feet before we start tunneling sideways. So the idea behind this thing is to uh, not disturb the sides because we don't want the sides to collapse. It also, it really depends on the soil um, consistency you have in your location if you're going to decide to do this. If you're digging in very sandy soil, it has a tendency to calve off. That also goes with clay type soil. If it's very wet, it'll tend to want to collapse. So you well, got to use your brain before you uh, decide to do something like that. You know, if the soil conditions don't warrant, you know, a hole that's very deep, um, it's unsafe. So yeah, use your brain. So uh, yeah, we're just tunneling right now. We're gonna go straight down and then we're gonna go over sideways because we want to have a place to uh, lay down in the bottom of this thing because this is our, uh, our, our Japanese spider hole. So we're just gonna keep digging and I'll keep you guys updated. Uh, yeah, we're into the clay layer, so it's a little bit harder to dig, but uh, slowly but surely we're, we're making it. We're making it. Don, what do you think? What do you think? The biggest biggest problem right now? Digging a hole. Is that the, <laughs> is that the biggest problem? Pretty much. Okay, mosquitoes, the mosquitoes aren't our problem. Well, the black flies and mosquitoes. The, the, the black flies kind of kamikaze right to your right to your eyeballs for some reason. It's it's just strange that they just kind of go for the I think they go for the little white catch light in your eye. They just go right for it and they just jam themselves in your eye. But uh, as long as you keep moving and you don't sweat so much and you don't breathe, mosquitoes don't bug you. All right, so as we uh, figured it out that uh, our topsoil layer is about uh, six inches here and then we're down to some, some lighter clay. All right, as you guys can see, we're down uh, a significant amount. We're probably about three and a half, four feet. Roughly, we've hit a gravel layer, which is really hard to dig and we're not even getting full shovel folds out anymore. But the idea is to get to about six feet deep because what we want to be able to do is pop our heads out of the hole and then have your rifle and you'll be able to, you know, pick off whoever's in the forest kind of hunting you. And then what you do is, is afterwards, you pop yourself back in your hole, you pull your lid closed and the people run by, none the wiser. So this is, this is we're trying to build an authentic Japanese spider hole. And so we've got a little bit more work to do. We've got to go down, well, another two and a half, three feet, but it's in gravel. So hopefully we can make it. Um, I'll let you guys know. I'll update you as uh, as things progress. As you can actually see the strata. You can see the you know the topsoil layer. You can see the clay layer, and then we've got back into kind of like a sand layer. And now we're down into gravel layer. So hopefully, uh, hopefully the gravel layer will be easy digging. We won't hit a giant boulder or anything like that. Well, as you guys can see, I am not far enough in the ground. I'm still I'm sitting I'm standing flat foot in the bottom of the hole, and I've got to go another three feet deep in order for my head to just kind of pop out of the top. And then, uh, and then we dig horizontal, which is going to be a different beast altogether. So we still got a little bit more digging left to do. All right, Don, what are we running into down there? Well, besides gravel, we're having, it's quite difficult to, to lift it because we don't have enough room. You need a shorter shovel. A shorter shovel a shorter or a bigger shovel. hole? Shorter shovel. Let's not, let's not go with a bigger hole just yet. <laughs> Um, so I've got, I think, I think this shovel here, this, this little army shovel guy, I think it can convert into a, uh, a right angle. If you undo this, if you loosen that guy up, if you loosen that guy, that's tightening. Loosen? It's reverse. Oh, is it reverse thread? I'm always try it one way, then try it the other. So the plant, if you, oh, I see. Okay. and then go like that and then tighten it. And I think this is, uh. This is an army shovel, so this is like this was designed, I think, for taking stuff out of like tiny holes. So it's yeah, kind of like, like a fox hole, like a scoop. Let me see. So like there, they got a little scoop hole. 
So now you should be able to just kind of get in there and kind of give like a scoop. See that? That worked pretty good. Repeat that a couple thousand times. <laughs> oh, look at that. There you go. I'm sure there's like a learning curve on that. <laughs> oh, I gotta give it a whirl. I gotta get. I have to try it in order to uh, actually, actually see. Actually, works pretty good. Does it work pretty good? Yeah, it's not too bad. I gotta have to give it a whirl just to make sure it, uh, it passes the Kevin test. I know Don. Don's got. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Scoop. Look at that. That's that's money all day long right there. Cool. All right, well, we're off to the races now. So as you guys know, we started off with the big shovels. Now, the army wouldn't have had the luxury of having the large handled shovel. They would have had their kind of like pack shovel, which uh, is like this small, small little army shovel, like this guy. So they would have pretty much exclusively dug their foxholes with these tiny little shovels. So we're switching back because I think this is the right tool for the job in order to get down inside and get the material out of a tiny little hole. Because we don't want a huge hole because well, what's the point? You'd, it won't be able to conceal it in the woods. What the fuck? Bugs Bunny down here. Oh. All right, well, we're getting down there. I think uh, any further we'll find the treasure to Oak Island. We've got some old shipwreck material down there, some wood and some pieces of metal. No, I'm kidding. There was none of that down there. This is gravel. We're just down to a gravel bed. We gotta get down another, well, it's always another foot, is it not? We're, we're down about just under armpit height. We gotta get down to about head height. And then we're going that away. Slowly but surely getting through the gravel layer. The little shovels been, seem to be working and then you just kind of work at it, get yourself a shovel and then you hand it up to Don and Don discards it over there and rinse and repeat. Sorry. It's getting hard pulling out your green leaf get there. Where is it? Is there a green leaf in there? Yeah. Weird. <coughs> my shoe. What you got? Nice. How are you gonna get out now? I have no idea. Just tractor. Tractor, get the tractor. <laughs> All right, well, that's pretty much an entire day of digging and we've got about five and a half feet deep to the lowest point of this hole. So that's pretty much as deep as I want to go at this down shaft because what the plan is to ultimately is to go horizontal once we've uh, got down far enough. We could probably go another foot. We may or may not do that tomorrow, but pretty much at the end of our day, uh, we got to collect some more materials to uh, shore up our horizontal shaft. So we need some shoring for the sides and then shoring for the top as well. So, uh, but yeah, pretty good day. We got down five and a half feet, which is a heck of a hole. You got to hand dig it. Let's see, I can try to get out of this hole. I almost need stairs. Oh, there it is. Just kind of tuck and roll. That hole is, is a glorious hole. Oh. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for people that like to learn new things, new skills, or simply want to explore their creativity. Skillshare allows you to invest in yourself and your personal growth. Do you have a specific skill you're trying to learn? Skillshare is the perfect place to start from photography and illustration to graphic design, freelancing, and more. You can find classes that will match your goals and interests. Interested in making a career pivot? Maybe up-leveling your skills in your current role? Skillshare is a great resource for freelancers and entrepreneurs to help you learn new skills to support your growing side hustle or launch into a totally new career. What's also great about Skillshare is that you can look at it on your phone. Maybe you got a little bit of downtime. Are you waiting for something else to happen? You could always learn on the go. So currently I'm exploring how to create a co cohesive Instagram feed by Dale McManus and he breaks it down step by step. They got uh, nine lessons. You got choose tile layout, choose a color scheme, choose a filter style to make a professional looking Instagram feed. My Instagram feeds all over the map. So I'm learning to make it better. What's also great about Skillshare is it's ad free so you can stay in the zone while you're learning new skills. There are new premium classes launched each week so there's always something new to discover. Entire catalog is now available with subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese, and German. The first 1,000 people who use the link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. All right, so we're at the point now where we're going horizontal. Now I'm figuring in my head, I don't really wanna put wooden supports up quite yet because then they'll be in the road and I won't be able to dig. So what I'm gonna do just to be safe is I'm not going to actually put myself underneath this 
face. So I'm gonna dig as far as I can without actually putting my head under there. And then once I get to that point, I'm gonna actually put some wood up here. So I'm never working under unsupported ground. I think that'll keep me from, for this, from this thing collapsing. But if you guys could see, there's about two feet of clay above me, which is really stable ground, as long as it's not wet, which today it's not wet. So I think we're good to go. Let's keep, let's, I'm just gonna keep digging. It ain't much. As you can see, this is the face of the tunnel. Ah. All right guys, we're at the stage now where we're tunneling horizontally into the dirt over this area here. So we want to put a space around six feet long in order to comfortably lay down over the last couple of days, it has rained significantly and we haven't experienced any sort of collapse down there, but uh, that's not to say we're not going to start cribbing it. So the plan today is to take our cross members and put horizontal pieces and then some uprights on the side in order to stabilize our dirt above us because the last thing we want to do is have dirt come down on us. The material I'm using for cribbing is old square cut timbers. Now the plan with those is to put a top horizontal piece that supports my ceiling and then two sides. My sides are a little bit long, so I have to cut them first in order to make them all the same size. My, uh, my horizontal pieces already came that length, so that's kind of the width predetermined that way. So all I have to do is cut the sides and then when I install them, they'll be even throughout the entire tunnel. How's that for grace? That's perfect. Oh, I'm in the bucket. We're in the hall. You guys see this? This is pretty cool. We got, uh, we've got some, well, we've got the start of a hole. You can kind of see over here where we've got the entrance, which is pretty exciting because uh, we're, it feels like we're getting somewhere. We can actually move around sort of thing. You can kind of, you kind of get the gist of where exactly we are. So we're going to go this way about six feet, the face of the wall. And uh, as you can see, I don't know if you guys can see up top there, that's, it's the top of the hole. So as you can see, we're pretty, pretty deep. It's actually quite cool in here. It's actually quite, it's unseasonably warm today but uh, it's actually quite nice down in the hole. So anyways, well, I'm gonna keep digging and uh, see how far we get, cause well, talking, more digging, dig, dig, dig. While digging the spider hole, it was important for me to get into the mindset of a soldier. While most people loathe hard physical labor, soldiers would have long periods where there was little to no activity. So digging was something to keep their minds and bodies busy. Also, while under a threat of imminent attack, having a safe place to hide away from the enemy must have been something worth working for. A large amount of dirt is a great insulator from ground attacks as well as aerial attacks. But of course, with this comes risk from grenades or from being surrounded by an enemy or pinned down for long periods of time. Conversely, escaping on foot and then ducking into a spider hole would provide concealment for long periods of time. These spider holes, while constructed simply with basic tools, once complete, are nearly invisible from the outside to the unsuspecting. All right, so what we're doing now is we're putting our cribbing in. So this guy, we've already kind of channeled uh, this piece of two by four in, and then we have to channel out this section here in order to get it across there. So this guy, it's gonna go up there somehow. So we gotta chisel out some more of this here. And this is the easy digging, it's the clay layer. So that's the plan there. Dig that out like that. Go all the way across. To try to catch it in my bucket.
shovel. My shovel is buried. Okay, so get take this thing out. top piece in. You can kind of see we're almost there. We just gotta get a little bit more out of the top. And I think we want to have this relatively snug actually supporting if it's not. What I want to do is actually tuck some more dirt under there. Let's see what we got for height. Our cross member. There we go. On this side. There. Maybe what we'll do is we'll add some, add some gravel underneath the feet. up all right now we gotta do that just carry on moving down the tunnel let's go down in the hole oh okay I'll give you guys a little bit of an update here so we've been digging a couple of hours now we're, we're at the stage of the game where we kind of need some auxiliary lighting it uh you can't you can't really tell on camera but if you look really closely you can see that it's getting dark so we got this little, little hanging light here that's how far we've gone. We've gone uh, four, got about two feet, two feet in with our cribbing. So we're gonna go down further that way, another four feet or something like that, in order to give us a nice kind of a bed area so we can hang out down here. So this is progress. You can see daylight up there, darkness over here. You can kind of see the clay, the clay layer and the uh, gravel layer. So it's, uh, it's pretty darn nifty actually quite cool the mosquitoes have found their way down here unfortunately but uh, they tend to I think they're lazy it's too cold so they kind of you can just squish them anyways let's dig 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 all day long dig 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 while I sing this song oh well hello welcome to the office I got the camera down here I got her set up on a on a bucket so you guys can join in the uh, adventure this is the business end of the uh the tunnel so as you can see we have our four by fours at the top and uh, i've got my hood on because i don't like getting sand in my ear i don't think anybody likes that so the plan is to uh put some more cribbing at the top so what uh what don does what don does is he actually excavates the he under undermines the the gravel part of it and then i come in and actually I chip away at the clay part at the top in order to get our cross members in. So I'm gonna try to I'm gonna try to show you guys All right. putting in a cross member because it's not the easiest thing to do and it's really hard to film because there's not that much room in here when you're working. There'll be a lot more room in here when you're just kind of hanging out. So the plan is to grab chisel away at the top. If you can get it into the bucket, it's like double duty. You don't have to pick it up off the ground. So that's the plan. So there we go. Just like that. All right. Let's. We got. Oh. Okay. All right. So we're at the point now where we're gonna put some. Uh, some cribbing in, so we've got the, uh, the hole excavated about another 16 inches. So we've got some pieces we're gonna put in. You guys can't see much, it's getting really dark because we're further and further away from the entrance. 
So I don't know, I'll probably get get some better light in here. Let's put this cribbing in and then I'll I'll get a better light. Alright. Should we give us a nice clear spot? And then I'm gonna take this four by four here, which is our cribbing for our top. Kind of get one side in. I got my little sledgehammer. There we go. That one there, we don't even need to cross or the uprights because it, uh, it's sitting on the other one. We don't have to use, because these are actually two by four uh, wood, actual old school two by four wood. So it's, uh, it's extra thick, so we don't have to go as many uprights. So anyways, that one there is, uh, is in place. So we're friction fitting them. And then uh, when it, uh, to hold them up, we're actually making the, the space shorter and then we jam our side pieces in. So there you go. That's one more cribbing. That's another four inches of cribbing. I got some sand in my eye now. Ah! It's all good, right? Okay. I'm gonna get you guys out of my road because you're taking up like, you know, five square feet over there. Whew. All right. More digging. Can we see what's going on in there? Holy moly, it's dark. There. So we're taking the face Look at that. Not bad, hey? Ever seen anything so graceful? That was graceful. You can, it's almost like you're on camera. Yeah, yeah. I had to make a good impression. That's right. So how is it down there? It's uh, dark. The digging's not bad, actually. It's it's uh, getting better. I think. I think we're just getting we're getting used to it. Yeah, like maybe that's day it. four of digging. It's crazy. All right, let's uh, let's keep digging. I'm going in the hole now again. Oh. Two more buckets, one bucket at a time. We're making her further into the horizontal part. It's coming, it's coming along. I'm very pleased with how it's coming. More, more buckets. It's easy for us who live in modern times to forget what it was like for our veterans fighting to keep us free. Freedom, stability, democracy are all things that are historically rare. Being ruled by dictators and tyrants is sadly very common. Being free to decide where we want to work, to have regular food on the table, to be able to move around freely and decide what we want to do with our body is something worth protecting. It would be remiss for me to not take the time right now to thank all the brave men and women in our armed forces who continue to keep us safe from the world dictators. Without them, our great nation wouldn't exist, and in absence of their bravery, we'd be nothing but slaves serving someone else's desires. So I would like to take the time to thank everyone who has fought for our democratic nations who today continue to do so. Democracy is fragile and demands that it will be protected and that all people have a voice so that all people may have the right to freedom of expression, religion, and bodily autonomy, and ultimately protection of the individual. We are all born free, but freedom is never free. I don't know if you can actually see this, if it's wide enough um, to actually see what I'm doing here. But uh, so I'm at the, you guys are in the actual unsupported area of the tunnel and I am in underneath the supported area of the tunnel. So the plan is to put the horizontal pieces up 
and the side cribbing to hold us from collapsing. So this is how it's been going the whole time. It's kind of like four inches at a time where I kind of chip away the ceiling in order to get us space for the horizontal piece. You guys can actually see that or not. And then what I do, I get my horizontal piece here and I put it up. Kind of friction, friction fit it in. A little bit on this side. On one side, and then I stick them on the other side, and then hammer them in place in order to kind of give it some support. And then you rinse and repeat through the entire process. Whew. All right, update time. We're in the hole. What do you think, Don? It's pretty neat, isn't it? Where, where, <laughs> you get a stone I just got. That's a big rock. You're gonna put that on your mantle at home. That's a big. Uh, that was in the floor. That's uh, they're not good sleeping quarters. So what we're working on now is the uh, smoothing out the floor because this is the the bedding area, and uh, we don't want large rocks there. So that's kind of the length of our tunnel has has been completed, which is kind of cool. As you can see, it's not. It's not the largest of tunnels, but it is my tunnel. So, what do you think? We got, we got two people in here. Like worst case scenario, yeah, you could you It'd could have cozy. two. Yeah, you could have one guy up the spider hole, you know, defending the hole, and the other guy kind of napping. Yeah, one guy on watch, one guy in the hole, relaxing. Yeah. So this is uh, you can kind of see our cribbing at the top, very secure. We're in a. I'm a in, I'm in about six feet, six feet into the uh, in the hole near the back of it. But uh, it is very cozy. It's a very cozy hole. We use square timbers in order to hide the hole. So we laid out loosely the dimensions of the hole using the square timbers, and then we tacked on another piece of wood to the side to hold them all together. And then we proceeded to cut an access, a smaller access hole in the middle of it, which we can remove, pop on and off in order to gain access to the spider hole. We then recessed the hatch by digging out some of the dirt in order for the hatch to be level with ground, grade level. And then we took all our pine needles that we pulled back and we re-spread them around the access hole in order to conceal it even further. So now what you have left is a very concealed hidey hole. So if you, if you wanna get into it, you kinda of have to look for it. There's no real distinctive markings on where exactly it is. So I think it's a success. All right, guys, I'll give you guys a little bit of a tour. Now, can you can you see it? Can you see it in there? Can you see it? Is it over here? Is, is it over here? I can't tell, really. Can you guys tell? Well, you guys know it's here because you've got to watch the entire build process. But can we tell where it is? Like, if you looked really closely, could you, could you tell? I don't know. I know where it is because I can kind of see the handle, but you guys probably can't see it because it's... A little it's very concealed so the idea is that it's perfectly concealed so when you're in it and there's an enemy coming by you're not going to be found you're you're you know you're you're hiding in your in your spider hole so have a look so here i'm standing on the hatch i think and i can see that i can see the latch so if i were to want it to get in this thing you basically you find your latch and take a look at this There, that is the hidey hole. So you just 
creep on in down there and you're perfectly concealed. I think this is a perfect success. Like this is, this is more than I hoped for. It's, it's like the best hidey hole ever. If you were playing hide and seek with somebody in this forest, they're never going to find you. You can't, can't even tell. Can't even tell it's there. Look it. Done. Rolling. Well, guys, <clears throat> I think this is as good a time as any to give this thing a try out. It's uh, sky's kind of opened up. It's uh, started to rain a little bit, and uh, I figured. This is probably worst case scenario for this sort of situation where there is raining and you're in an underground fort. So I, I brought I brought some items that are sort of authentic military gear, sort of I don't know if it's standard issue, but this is actually this was sent to my brother uh, by a, a person in the in the military. So this is I, I don't exactly know the name of this thing, but it's a little tiny camping stove. So as you can see, it's about the size of a deck of cards, and uh, it's got a couple of rivets on the sides. And what happens is you take this thing and you slide it open. Okay, so I don't know if you guys can see that very well. But, uh, and then what it does is it turns into, come on, I can't. It's about as hard for you guys to see it as it is for me. So this thing, little guy slides out and it turns in to a little table. So that, that there, and it comes with fuel source with these, uh, these little pucks. And I don't exactly know what the little pucks are, uh, but there's some sort of fuel source. I don't know if you guys want to leave a comment down there. I, I don't know what the pucks are. You can light them with a match and they sit on top of this little guy here. And then your can goes on top of here, essentially giving you a, a little crook surface. So you can, you can cook a can of beans or well, anything that you can fit on this little table, which is really cool. So that, that little guy there is, is, is my cook stove. You see that? I apologize for the lighting in here. It's kind of dim. So anyways, that's that's the cook surface there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fold her back up. So just leave that thing over there. So I got some other some other goodies. So then you got your knife and your fork. Little guy you can fit in your pocket. Again, little tiny stuff. So like the creature comforts that uh, would be useful in an emergency situation, you know, just to kind of give you that sense of home. So you have your cook surface, you have your eating utensils. And then where's my other guy? Oh, the, the little guy. So now I didn't actually open this guy up because it's kind of delicate. So this little thing could fit in your other pocket. So what it is, it is a cup, a foldable, cup. The idea is to get it deployed. There. So there is a little cup so you can you can fill that with uh, your coffee or your water or whatever and it folds down into a little let's see watch. So that guy there can fit inside your pocket. So that's pretty cool. So there's there's the cup. There's some water and my coffee cup. It works pretty good. It's got a little bit of leak. I probably didn't do it right. I think at a pinch you would be happy to have that cup. Maybe I got to twist it or something. There we go. I think what I had to do was really push the bottom of the cup in order to get it to stop leaking. So you can see, just to prove to you, I got water in it. You got to push the bottom of the cup. Hold the side, push the bottom of the cup tight, and then it stays watertight. There you go. So that's a little cup. And it, what it's neat because it folds down folds down and it goes in your pocket that's pretty neat I guess I should uh, I should mention my coffee cup it's got a little carabiner on here so you can clip it onto your jacket and uh, you can have your water your coffee cup just like that so it's just kind of you know if you don't have your foldable cup you can have your clip-on cup 
So I brought some other fuel sources down here. So this is a military grade, military issue. So it says on here, I can't even pronounce it, fuel gel diethylene glycol. So this is a fuel pack. It, uh, it's designed to be lit with a match and then it's a fuel source. So you got a lot of BTU in this pack here so you guys can see that. Can you see that? Yeah. So that there in an emergency situation is good to have. Uh, a fuel source backup BTUs for cooking and whatnot. So that there, I got a couple of those, and those will those will be good for pretty much ever. So you could store them down here if you if you wanted to, uh, you know, bug out here and you had to hide for an extended period of time. You can have your cooking source. You could you could probably cook right in the hole. Um, uh, you know, as long as you kept the lid cracked a little bit, it would cycle the air around and allow you to to cook right down in the hole and there's no smoke, which is uh, we would give away your position. And then there's worst case scenario, you get wounded and you need some first aid. We got the uh, six inch wound dressing hemorrhage bandage. It uh, it's comes vacuum packed, so you don't want to open that unless you really need it, but it's here, it's sterile. It allows you to wrap up any wounds or gashes you might have kind of first aid. So uh, yeah. This is made, made in Israel, which is kind of cool. What else have I got here? I got, this is emergency fire starter. Got my flint, which is right there. And then my, my metal, my for striking. Why won't it go? light myself on fire oh there it goes see it I prefer matches or a torch but there so that see the fire starter in there so in a pinch and you need to start a fire, that guy is there. If you don't have any, any matches or anything like that, that can start your fire for your cooking. And then if you're down here for an extended period of time, you got your beans and uh, you know, you wanna freshen up a little bit. I've got the old school straight razor. So you can shave down here old school got a little bit of a whale bone on that thing so there we go i guess we could be used as a weapon as well pack myself my dinner i got uh, a can of beans because uh, i imagine that's kind of the sort of the rations you'd have you know during wartime i've got a little little primitive cooker i'm going to cook it on and then i'm going to crawl into my japanese spider hole and have a little nap i am kind of tired because it was a Long day, a long day of digging and constructing. So I just figured, get, get some food in my belly and go lay down. Cause uh, yeah, I don't know how long the rain's gonna last. Hopefully it doesn't rain all night. And wake up floating or something like that. That would be that would be no good. So uh, yeah, let's gonna give this thing a. This is what I got. This is like a, my little cooking thing with my little my um, my fuel pellets. That would be like army issue. So that's the gun goes like this and your can goes on top and allows you tiny little fire kind of very um, inconspicuous. So we're gonna give that a whirl. That actually worked pretty slick. You see my little my little cooking fire. So as you can see it's not drawing much attention at all. I got my beans here. I'm just gonna heat them up and open my can. It's better if you leave the lid on because it keeps the heat inside, so we just put that on top. pretty impressed with that little stove it's uh, actually got little bubbles coming out of that thing that thing I can't even I can't even touch the can it's that hot it's uh, it's bubbling I think it's I think it's done I don't want much more hotter than that because I have to carry it down into my uh, into my bunker so uh, I don't know how do you put this thing out I think you just let it burn out because uh, yeah it's got that little fuel Ooh, she's hot anyways I'm gonna get uh, get that sorted crawl into the spider hole and uh, turn out the lights for the night 
just gonna crawl down there, set up my bed, because uh, it's getting dark, so I don't know if I can fit down here with my jacket on. I feel like I can fit. Just ever so suck it in there. All right, there we go. I get the bottom. Got my, my beans. All right, see you guys in the hole. All right, welcome to the inside of the spider hole. So I gotta get, uh, gotta get situated here because it's not exactly the most accommodating place with uh, with the camera. Anyways, it's uh, it's dry. Report that. That's it's perfectly dry. It's actually quite comfortable. It's um, it's really humid outside. So uh, in here, it's actually not as humid, which is surprising. In the, it's really quiet. I guess because we're kind of underground. Anyways, I'm gonna grab my uh, gonna grab my spoon so I can eat my eat my beans. They're getting cold. I set you guys up. Oh, they're perfect. I'd imagine this would be like a welcome meal if you were under attack and you were like, you know, cozy at home in your little hole, safe from the enemy, having your beans. This can is still crazy hot. <laughs> Ow. These are really good. Bush's best beans. I can't remember the last time I've had a can of beans. It's surprisingly cozy. Although I can hear a couple of mosquitoes that came in. That's all I can hear is mosquitoes. There's no other sounds but the buzz of mosquitoes. I'll have to get those things before I go to bed. I have to give you guys a little bit of a tour down here. I've got a little lantern off to the side there. It's pretty much giving me most of the light. And uh, we ended up digging a um, kind of like a sinkhole right at the door and it's kind of like a cold trap and what that does is any kind of cold air that comes in from the hatch will sink down into that hole kind of keeping yourself a little bit warmer up up in this level here where we are where we're laying so that's the uh with the cold thing and also it, it you know in the event it's like a you get a fuzz on you in the event of a grenade say attack and it came in you can throw it inside the hole and it offers somewhat of protection. From what I've read, anyways, I, uh, I'm not an expert by any stretch of the imagination. When it comes to this, there is, um, we did punch some air holes into the, into the lid itself. So there's oxygen that's coming down because uh, that's something you want to be conscious of because uh, you are in a, a relatively enclosed space. You don't want to be burning any, any sort of well, anything you don't want to be light, like lighting candles or anything like that. If you if you know required to, I, you'd probably want to use them sparingly. But if you had some sort of chemical lighting, like a glow stick or even um, yeah, pretty much that, or like battery lamp, because they didn't have them back then. But yeah, for a guy that doesn't like noise, this is like the perfect spot. Once I get rid of those mosquitoes, what I was thinking of doing is maybe carving a uh, a kind of like a little shelf on this back wall because uh, I want to I want a shelf. Put a little candle up there. I know I know I said no candles, but I think what'll happen is anything will come up and kind of go out the the uh, the vent hole. So I think I should be okay. So if I carve a little shelf in the wall. You guys see that little shelf? It's kind of hard to see. And my, my, my matches. My matches and my little tea light. I 
I can actually see the smoke going up out. Perfect. My little tea light. Great. There we go. Take a look at that. It's already more homey in here. My glowy wall. It's kind of like a little lantern on the in the wall. So as you guys can see, I'm in the uh, far end of the horizontal space. Um, this is this back wall is still actually clay. So it's got clay and it's got the gravel. You can see the gravel layer down there. So that's all clay. And then you got the uh, the candle. So my walls are made out of um, hemlock, squared up hemlock timbers. So they're very water resistant. It's kind of like cedar, but it's more durable hemlock. They used to build docks. So it's, uh, it, it's, it's really good at being underground. So this will last a really long time. And the fact that there's, you know, not a lot of moisture down here, that uh, that'll make it last a really long time. It's also got a gravel, gravel bed, so it drains really well. That's kind of what my sleeping uh, arrangement's on. So I have a wool blanket underneath, which is sitting on gravel. So there's not a lot of moisture coming up from the ground. If it was on clay, that'd be another story. You'd kind of be wicking up the uh, the moisture from the ground. Hopefully get some rest once I kill all the mosquitoes. Yeah, I will see you guys in the morning. Oh, that was a terrible sleep. Um, I ended up, I ended up kind of putting my jacket back on and my rain, my raincoat and actually sticking my head underneath there uh, because I don't know, the mosquitoes just keep coming in. It's crazy and, and they're just incessantly buzzing. I had a terrible, terrible sleep. So, <laughs> and now I've got to get out of this hole and well, <coughs> I don't know if I can. <laughs> uh, if you're watching this video, I got out of the hole. I, <laughs> you can, like, is it, it's day, it's just daybreak, just barely daybreak. I don't know what time it is, it's probably like five in the morning or something. What time does the sun come up? I don't even know. <sighs> I gotta stop yawning. Anyways. Um, I'm going to wrap this guy up. I hope you guys enjoyed this one and uh, join me on the next one.